بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله let us spend some time uh, with verse number 28 of سورة البقرة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم إليه ترجعون Few comments on the tajweed كنتم أمواتا There is nun sakina followed by ta and this is we call ikhfa kuntum <coughs> all the thumma there are three thumma here so there is this meme there is a tashdid over meme so whenever there is a meme mushaddada tashdid over meme we need to stay on it for two harakat thumma yumitukum thumma yuhiikum thumma you see thumma so let us observe this tajweed uh, ahkam uh, now let us go on the plain meaning of this verse kaifa is a question mark and this is a rhetorical question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is denying a current situation with the kuffar and Allah is saying how how come it is possible it's like a rhetorical question kaifa takfurun billah takfurun means you become kafir disbelief reject the proofs of Allah which Allah has described previously takfuruna so you reject what Allah you reject the signs of Allah and Allah is talking to the mankind because this series of verses are for the mankind for all the populations not only for Muslims كيف takfuruna billah how come you are becoming a kafir. You are denying these clear proofs of Allah. Wa kuntum amwatan. Whereas kuntum, you have been dead. Amwatan. Fa ahyakum. This fa means then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ahyakum. Ahya means made haya, brought haya. Kum, you, mankind. So Allah is the one who brought you to life after you have been dead. Kuntum amwatan fa'ahyakum. Thumma yumitukum. And then after spending few years on this earth, thumma yumitukum. Then Allah is the one who is going to cause you to die. You meet. Mata is uh, somebody died. Amata means somebody caused another body to die causing someone to die is amata somebody when he dies mata you see the difference of when you add the the you add a letter you increase the meaning this is the beauty of arabic thumma yumitukum he is the allah who is going to cause you to die after spending number of years on this earth but this is not the end of the story allah says thumma yuhyikum and thumma is different than fa. You you notice that in the first one Allah says, "Kuntum uh, amwatan fahiyakum." You are dead. Uh, then all, all in a sudden Allah made you to cause life. There is no gap. But here it says "thumma yumitukum" because we stay like seventy years on this earth, and that's why there is a gap, and that's why Allah used the word "thumma." ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ And then Allah will cause you again to raise from your graves. And there are years in the grave. Nobody knows how many years we stay in the grave before we are resurrected. That's why Allah used thumma. ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And then after that, after you are resurrected, there are some protocols, there are some procedures, there are some events of reckoning happening. But ultimately, we are coming back to Allah. Thumma ilayhi turja'un. So this is very interesting. Ayah number 28 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And let us see the 
position of this ayah in relationship to the previous ayat. We need to observe always the smooth transition from an ayah to the previous ayat. So if you have recalled and you have been with me in the previous sessions, you notice that from verse number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to address mankind. Ya yuhan nas u'abudu rabbakum. Worship Allah. This is the central topic of creation. This is the central cause of creating us as a human being. Is the ibadah. To worship Allah alone. And the series of verses that followed just is an explanation that why we should do that. Because Allah is the true Allah. He is the one who has created this earth for us, made it suitable for our living and staying. And Allah has also sent down prophets and messengers and scriptures like the Quran with the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And so the series of verses that talked about why we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all this power. And we should really... Uh, Allah didn't create these things for us for free. In return, Allah wants us to worship Him alone, not to commit any shirk. So after all this thing, I think today's verse, number 28, fits very well. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ how can, after seeing all these proofs that I have mentioned in the previous verses, since verse number 21 and now in 28, so all these seven previous verses gave you enough proof that Allah alone is the one who is supposed to be worshipped. So, hence, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ How come, after all this, you are still hiding this truth? And we have seen the root word of kafara as in the english it means cover it's in arabic also is cover covering the truth because if you just open your eyes the truth is everywhere in front of us the problem is when we deliberately go and cover this truth so don't cover this truth and this is a rhetorical question allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have used normal statement. And normal statements are boring. But when there is a rhetorical statement, as if a person starts to, whenever you ask a question, immediately you, 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 you put all your attention to the, to the question. So the questions are really very much uh, useful tools whenever uh, you want to uh, draw the attention of the audience. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ And remember, as I have said, the, the address is for all the mankind. That's why the Qur'an is for the mankind. It is never a book for only Muslims. It's for the whole mankind. Any person at any time, any location, feels that this is a personal Qur'an addressing each person. That's why, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ Then this verse comes and gives us the reasoning that why, why it is very strange that still people are atheist, still people are not submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas we as human beings, our story is very simple. This one line verse or one and a half line verse uh, tells us the story of the human history. If somebody asks that, can you tell us the story of human history in one and a half line, it would be very difficult. But here Allah's version of this story, that we are nothing but two deaths, and two lives and that is the whole human history in two deaths and two lives how is that so the first death is when we were in the world of 
nothingness, lifeless world. There was a sperm that went on and made its fertilizing the, um, the eggs. The sperm of the father fertilized the eggs of the mother. So that form is motionless, is like lifeless form. And then there is a process that happens in a very interesting way that today now the biology sciences because of microscope, because of various devices, we now started to know a few things that happens in the material world, in the things that we can observe with those instruments. Okay, the cell divisions and then each day that thing is developing, that, that fertilized egg starts to divide into the cells and then interesting thing happens in that egg and then it starts to take a form and a shape and then after some time it starts to distinguish yeah this might be the hands this might be the legs this you see the fetus is started to grow but then after a certain time maybe four months or so there is something interesting happens it was in a world that you can say very insignificant in a lifeless world and then all in a sudden there are things happens beyond the biology science there are things happens that Allah told us in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud As-Sadiq Al-Masduq one of the very interesting hadith where the Prophet ﷺ told us and he could only tell us because Allah has informed our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and Allah is the engineer, Allah is the creator and he knows so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed some of those secrets that what happens, there is an angel, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is giving permission to the angel to blow the life. So from the lifeless amatakum, all in a sudden there is a life now in this small child and all in a sudden the heart starts to beat. فَأَحْيَاكُمْ So it happens all in a sudden. In one second, it was just maybe a form that has hand things, but it was dead. It was dead. All in a sudden, there is a process that no human science and technology can understand and bring that process because it is a blow, a divine blow in the womb of, of the mother done by the angel and there starts the life all in a sudden and it's not only the life it starts with a whole bookkeeping a person is given that many thousand kilograms of rice that he will eat in his 70 years that thousand liters of water that he would drink that i don't know thousands uh, uh, metric ton of oxygen or whatever is the appropriate unit that child will do everything is is, is written and more interestingly what would be the fate of this person whether he will be Shaqi or, or Sa'id he will be people of Jannah or people of Jahannam you see this important event that we start while we are in the womb so that is the shift between the first life first deadness and the first life Kuntum amwatan fa'ahyakum then then this is very clear, we know it very well that any one of us will die and we know that process very well. This is the mouth that no science and technology can prevent. They can delay things with very nice or advancement in pharmaceuticals and medicine and things but the aging process no, can, no one can stop. It is the Allah. That's why Allah is attributing things to him when he said amatakum means somebody else. It's not a normal natural process. No, there is an Allah who has given permission to an angel and this angel is dedicated to take the life, to give the life and take the life, which we call malakul maut. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ as in حَامِيم سَجْدَ Suratul Sajda. There is an appointed angel who has been given the responsibility to take our life so this 
wafa is the the first death the second death i mean is very well known and then we again go to another world which is the world of unseen and again here no science and technology can give any sneak peek on what happens there but we know so many information because the prophet sallam has let us know and this is the wonderful world of the grave what happens in the grave in a state where we are mayit we are dead but lots of interesting thing happens in that world where the body is dead then there is the soul and the soul is is taken into a, a world where it is punished or is given uh, pleasure until a day comes that's why thumma until a day, day comes that we will be raised again and this part the mushrikeen at the time of the prophet sallam and maybe today as well the atheists the non believers they think that if we are in the grave that's the end of it but no allah is saying here there is another yuhyikum and after that yuhyikum there is no fourth or a third death that is the final so this is the whole history because the what happens after that is allah saying thumma ilayhi turja'un you gonna return back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by this returning back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that there is a questioning allah has sent us to this world as an exam as a testing and whatever we do it is adding to our um, exam paper either correct answer or wrong answer but it would be very uh, foolish that person gives exam and then the teacher takes the exam paper and throws it in the garbage no there is a there is a time where we have to be uh, somebody needs to look into the paper and and give us a promotion or a damnation we fail or pass this is how you understand the exam in this world and this is exactly what happens when allah says thumma ilayhi turja'un and then you gonna go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thumma ilayhi turja'un so by saying thumma ilayhi turja'un and then you will go back to allah means you will be subjected to to the accountability of whatever you have done in this 70 years in this world people will go to jannah and people will go to jahannam so see how this big big facts and questions allah has wrapped it in one and a half line because this is the miracle this is the the uh, the the, the uh, miracle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, <coughs> in surah al mulk in the second verse of surah al mulk alladhi khalaqa al mauta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala he is the allah who has created the life and haya khalaqa al mauta wal haya and there is a purpose liyabluwakum ayyuk ahsanu amala to test to test us and see who is the one who is more perfect in his his deeds and some of us in the said i think fudail ibn iyad that means uh akhlasahu wa aswaba means the one who has made the most sincerity who was more sincere in his deeds in this world he didn't associate any shirk and his his ibadah was according to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu he didn't come and invent new ways of ibadah so his ibadah was for allah and not for anybody else that is akhlasahu and he followed strictly and he sought the knowledge he asked the first people who has the knowledge that how would i perform the prayer so he has followed the instruction of the prophet sallallahu and the ulama and the sahaba and the muslimin how certain ibadah is done and he didn't come and say okay i will use my own brain and introduce something this is the purpose of our life this is the way how we will pass exam with with distinction whenever we have these two criteria so it's it doesn't matter 
the quantity of our ibadah, rather it matters the quality of the ibadah. If you even pray two rak'at, let it be uh, in these two criteria, akhlasahu aswaba. Rather than praying hundred of rak'at, you spend the whole night praying, but you are not following the sunnah of the Prophet or praying to show off someone else. Okay? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hidayah, give us guidance. Let us not be like the kafirin who uh, hide this truth. They know the truth and they hide it. These are very clear signs in, in front of us. Let me just uh, mention one verse of Surah Ghafir, chapter 40, verse number 11, because this verse is kind of an explanation of today's verse or reinforcing of today's verse. And the best way that we we make comments on the Quran is to bring in verses from the Quran that are related to our verse in in uh, uh, in question. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Qalu Rabbana amatna thnatayni wa ahiyatna thnatayni fa'atarafna bidunubina fahal ila khuruj min sabil." This is exactly what will happen in the day of judgment. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us a scenario that what will happen on the day of judgment in verse number 11 of Surat uh, uh, Ghafir that <clears throat> on the day of judgment the kuffar will be brought and they will be uh, rebuked and they will be subjected to questions that that you remember when the prophets and the and the muslimin and the good people and the pious people in the society came and invited you to believe in Allah. What is happening now? So they will start to beg Allah, uh, saying that, Amatana thnataini wa ahiyaitana thnatain. Oh Allah, you have made us die twice and you made us live twice. Fa'atarafna bidunubina. Now today we confess all our sins that we have done. فَهَلْ إِلَىٰ خُرُوجٍ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ Now, since we have confessed, can you please let us get out of this hellfire? Can we find a way out today? So, it is too late, unfortunately. Because in this world, Allah has, through this Quran, has given us these facts. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ So, if you combine today's verse with this verse in uh, Surah Ghafir, you will see that Allah has already informed us about these things and the kuffar will continue to be lie, to continue to deny, continue to be on the kufr until when it is too late and they will indeed, a day will come where they will indeed start to remember, Oh Allah, you have given us twice death and twice life, we have misused it. But the confession, just the confession will not avail them because the exam has finished and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks into the exam time which is before the death. So let us utilize the time. Let us utilize the time and try to add as much as possible to our exam paper. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.